2013 through present day Ford Fusion electric power steering rack replacement. I'm Brian Essa from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of changing out the electric power steering rack. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you the uh, symptom that this rack had. So as you hear, I'm turning it side to side and it's making this creaking and popping noises. Sometimes you'll hear squealing noises and you'll sometimes you'll have a message on the heads up display that uh, says that there's a problem with the power steering rack unit. I'm going to be installing a factory replacement unit, but I will link up in the description a remanufactured one. But I wanted to show you the part numbers of the factory one just in case you decide to go that route. So it's recommended that you disconnect the negative battery cable, so unbolt it and tuck it off to the side. Before you disconnect that make negative battery cable, I recommend you have the steering wheel straight, disconnect the battery. Now we're going to crawl under here by the gas pedal, brake pedal, and we're going to disconnect the, uh, the steering coupler here. So you're going to need a T40 Torx bolt here. You're going to remove the bolt right here, and then you're just going to slide the steering shaft up and pull it off. No need to do any marking or anything, just slide it off and tuck it off to the side once you get it unbolted. We're going to be dropping the subframe out, but we don't need to worry about the engine being held up. It's held on with two motor mounts that are bolted to the, uh, the unibody up top. So what we're going to do is get the vehicle racked up. Go ahead and remove both front tires. Once you get both front tires removed, then you can remove the lower splash shields. So you're going to go around the perimeter of the shields here and removing the screws. They're held on with some 10 millimeter screws right here. So you just go all the way around. Once you get the main uh, front shield removed, then we're gonna remove some of the rear shields here. They need to be folded down so we can get to the uh, access to the subframe bolts here. There's gonna be a couple screws at the bottom of the uh, fender well here that we need to remove. I believe there were seven millimeters. So you take out these on both on the left and right side here. And now once you get those removed, now uh, I, I had to peel this back. And the reason why is because this little fastener here was bent over. So I wasn't able to get it off without a lot of work. So what I did was just use my bungee cord and kind of flexed it out of the way. Now I have access to the bolts. Now I'm going to take the tie rods here and loosen up the jam nuts here on the left and right side. It's a 22 millimeter uh, nut here. So you're going to crack these free here. Now we're going to take the outer tie rod bolts here off. And there's a 21 millimeter socket that you're going to need. Go ahead and spin these off. If they spin on you and don't want to come out, then you'll have to hold the top of a wrench like this. So I used a wrench on the nut and then a uh, ratchet and socket on the uh, the spindle portion of the uh, tie rod and went ahead and spun those out until the uh, bolt came out. Once you get the tie rod unbolted, it should drop right out like this. So we're going to do this for both left and right side. Now we're going to unbolt the sway bar link in right here. So you're going to follow it up. We're going to unbolt it from the strut right here. Uh, I believe I'm using a 17 millimeter socket to do that. So go ahead and spin that nut off. We're going to do that at both left and right side. Once you get them unbolted, you'll just pull them out like this and then push them back towards the rear of the vehicle like this. Now we're going to go underneath and we're going to take this little crossover plate off. So we're going to remove the three fasteners on the left and three fasteners on the right. One thing you'll notice is I'm using impact tools to remove just about every fastener on here. There's a lot of fasteners and a lot of them are pretty snug and uh, doing them all by hand would take forever. So I recommend using impact tools. I will link up all the ones that I'm using in this video in the description. That way if you need to pick up any of those, you can find those links there. When I'm taking brackets off like this, I like to keep the bolts with it. So set that aside for now. Now we're going to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts here on the exhaust hangers. This portion right here is called the flex pipe right here. So we're going to take the bolts right here off the flex pipe and we're just going to let it hang there. Now we're going to go on the other side of the frame here and we're going to unbolt the uh, motor mount here, the torque mount here. So there's three bolts holding this on. There's one here, one here, and the third bolt is going to be right here just below, below the axle. So go ahead and remove these uh, three fasteners. So we just need to remove the three bolts. We don't need to take the mount all the way out. And now you can see the uh, engine is rocking back and forth. Now you can unbolt the rack by removing the bolt right here. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So the steering rack only has two main bolts holding them on. I believe they're 19 millimeter in size and they're about, about six, six to eight inches long. So you're going to go ahead and remove these two fasteners here. So we're not going to be able to get the rack out just yet, but it's unbolted. And the reason why I do that is so I can maneuver it around to get to the, uh, the wire loom holders and uh, disconnect all the connectors. So now I'm going to unplug the rack. So you're going to slide the, uh, the lock tab backwards. And once you got it slid back, then you can use your uh, thumb here and press on the connector and pull off. 
Once you get the main wire loom off, you're going to have to pop the uh, wire loom holder off right here. And I used a little uh, a metal panel popping tool here to uh, get in here and uh, give it a good twist and pop it out of the, its little holder here. It's kind of a little pain to get them out. but uh, So you're going to pop it out. Once you get it popped out here on this side, then we're going to go underneath and go on the opposite side of the rack here and unplug the smaller electrical connector. So you're going to pull the red lock tab back here. We're going to slide it back. And once you get it slid back, you squeeze the tab and un, uh, unplug it. Once you get it unplugged, then you're going to follow the wire loom back. And then there's going to be another holder right here. right here. So you're going to uh, pry this out of the uh, rack right here. And you keep following it back, and there will be another loom holder here. And then on the right up here where the uh, steering coupler portion of it goes in, there's another uh, wire loom holder here. You're going to pop that out right there. And if the sway bar is in the way, you can just lift it up and push it back towards the rear of the car. And now you have access in here to, uh, to get the wire loom holder out. So now I installed a pull jack with a block of wood just underneath the uh, motor mount right back here that we unbolted. And now I'm going to unbolt the rear of the subframe. So I'm going to pull out the smaller fasteners here on the, on the subframe bracket here. So the two smaller bolts are 15 millimeters. So go ahead and remove these two 15 millimeter bolts. And you can do that on both left and right side. And then once you get these all removed, now we're going to remove the larger bolts here. Or actually, we're going to drop them down. So you can go ahead and back these bolts out here. And then the whole bracket and everything will come down. So you're going to do that for both sides. So remove both rear subframe bolts. So once I got the subframe bolts uh, removed, now I'm going to start screwing the pull jack downwards. And that's going to start lowering the subframe. Uh, I'm going to lower it down as low as it'll go and uh, see if I can get the rack and pinion out. If it doesn't come down low enough where the rack and pinion will come out, then what I'll have to do is loosen up the front subframe bolts a little bit. Don't take them out. You just loosen them up a few, and then you can lower the subframe down a little bit more. It'll give you more slack. If you notice here, I rotated the sway bar backwards in the upright position. That gives me more room to slide the rack out of the, uh, out of the frame here, out of the car. So when you go to slide it out, you want to slide it out towards the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, when I was going to slide this down out, there wasn't quite enough room. So I'm going to go up to the front of the uh, subframe here, and I'm going to loosen up the, the main bolts here. So I'm going to use a wobbly socket and an extension here because the, I didn't want to take off all the plastic covers in here. And with that, I can get it right in there. So I'm going to back these out, you know, about a quarter, a quarter of the way. So back them out a few threads. And then once you get them back loosened up a few threads, then you can lower the uh, the the pole jacket some more and the subframe will lower down and now that'll give you the additional clearance you need to uh, pull the rack and pinion out of the vehicle. Also if you notice I pulled the uh, rubber boot that went around the steering coupler portion of the rack I pulled that off and set that aside now I'm just going to work it out towards the passenger side of the vehicle and uh, you know being careful not to snag anything as you come out like that now that you got the old rack out, now we can take the new rack and feed it back in the exact same way. I'm coming in from the passenger side and you need to kind of just twist it and work it around the exhaust and uh, different obstacles as you come through the frame here. Once you get it in there, then you twist it back into the upright position like this. Now you can take the rubber boot that went around the uh, steering coupler portion of it right here and, and reinstall that. And you kind of just look at it the way it, you'll see how it fits uh, up against the uh, firewall. So you're going to put it back in the same position and it just presses on to the rack. There's no bolts or clamps or anything, just press it on. Now you can finish lining up the, uh, the rack. And once you get it lined up with the bolt holes, what I like to do is uh, run the bolts in by hand and start the uh, bolts I don't tighten them down just yet I just run them in on the both the left and the right side so we'll tighten these up in a minute but for right now we're gonna leave them loose in case we have to wiggle it around now we can take the wiring harness here and put it back into position and plug it into the rack and put uh, pl plug in all the wire loom holders back into the little brackets and push them back in so you'll line those up and push them in until the whole wiring harness is secured back onto the rack so now that the wiring harness is re-secured to the rack and all plugged in, now I'm going to make sure that the boot here that goes up against the firewall is in the right position and uh, just kind of make sure it's all lined up and pressed in. And once I'm happy with that, uh, then I'm going to take the pole jack and put it underneath the subframe here and rotate it upwards and, and push it back up into the body of the car. When you're lifting the subframe back up into position, you want to make sure that you keep a close eye out for anything being pinched underneath it or anything like that. And don't force anything, just let it kind of naturally go up. 
once the frame is pretty much back up against the uh, body of the car, now you can go ahead and start the uh, the main bolt and brackets here. So you can spin these in by hand, definitely do it by hand. And you're going to do this for the left and the right side of the frame, so go ahead and start both of these bolts. After that you can go ahead and start the smaller 15 millimeter bolts here, uh, put those back into their position. You can do that for both the left and the right side. I also recommend that you start these all by hand also. Now you can use an impact gun or, or you can do this by hand and run it up until it's snug up against the frame. We're going to torque this down by hand. So just run it up until it's snug and you're going to do that both left and right side. And once you get the back two done, then you can go up to the front and you can uh, run the uh, front ones up until they're snug. So you're going to do that both on the left and the right side. So all four corners will be run up and snug. Once you got all four corners snugged up, now you can switch over to your torque wrench and you can torque these down to 173 foot pounds. It's quite a bit of torque. So you're going to torque all four corners down and you're going to torque them down with an easy, even pressure. You don't want to jerk the torque wrench. That'll give you an inaccurate torque. So just even pressure until all four corners are torqued. Now that the main bolts are torqued down, we can uh, run the smaller 15 millimeter bolts up until they're snug. And once they're snug, then we can switch over to a torque wrench and torque these down to 33 foot pounds. And you're going to do that for both left and the right side. Now you can go ahead and reinstall the exhaust hanger bolts here, or the flex pipe, and go ahead and uh, run those in until they're snug. After that, we can take our little cross member brace here and go ahead and uh, install that and run all three of the bolts or all six of the bolts in until they're snug. Once you got all six of the nuts or fasteners tightened up with the uh, impact tool, then you can switch over to a torque wrench. Now you can torque down all six of the fasteners down to 85 foot pounds. Now we're ready to install the engine torque mount here. We're going to install the three bolts. I like to put a little bit of blue thread locker on these. Um, that's what they originally had, so I'm going to put a little bit of blue thread locker on the uh, threads. And then I'm going to start all three bolts by hand. You have to rock the engine back and forth, left and right, to, uh, to get the bolts to start. And once you get them started, then you can run them in until they're snug, and then you can torque these all down to 85 foot-pounds. Once you got the engine slash transmission uh, torque mount here, uh, resecured and torqued down. Now you can finish running in the uh, bolts here for the rack and pinion to so run them in until it's snug. And once you got them both run in on the left and the right side, run in snug. Then we're going to switch over to a torque wrench. So you can go ahead and torque these bolts down to 173 foot pounds. So now that you got both left and right side of the rack torqued down to 173 foot pounds, now that the rack is officially torqued down to the subframe. We're going to take the sway bar and uh, pull the links up back into position and stab them through the, uh, the holes on the strut there. And make sure all these little brackets here for the wire loom and everything are uh, put back into place. And start the bolt and we can go ahead and run that down and tighten those down. Once you got them snugged up, you can torque them down to uh, 55 foot-pounds. Now we're going to switch over to the rack here and we're going to take off the old outer tie rods. And I'm counting exactly how many twists it takes to uh, come off. So on mine it was 23 turns. After that we're going to take the jam nut off and we need to transfer the jam nut over to the uh, new rack here. These parts do not come with it. So if any of those are in bad shape I recommend you replace those. So I spun on the jam nut. Now I'm going to spin on the, uh, the outer tie rod here the exact amount of turns that I, I took it off before. That way our alignment's in, our, in the ballpark. And you're going to do that for both left and the right side. Once you got them screwed all the way back into position, now you can take it and stab it back through the spindle here. We can start the, uh, the nut, and then we're going to torque this nut down. We're going to run it in until it's snug, and then we're going to torque it down to 111 foot-pounds. Once you got it torqued down to 111 foot-pounds, then you're going to repeat the same process on the opposite side. Now that that's taken care of, I'm going to tighten up the uh, jam nuts on the uh, rack here. Now that you got the jam nuts re-secured, the next step is going to be is to put up the, uh, the lower shield. So we're going to flip those back into position and, and re-bolt those back up, the big, these small shields and the larger shield here. And then we can go ahead and install our tires and, and torque those down. Now we're going to bolt up the uh, steering coupler. Before we do, I like to put a little bit of red thread locker on the thread of the bolts. That way that, that does not vibrate loose and come back off. Then you can line it up with those slot on the, uh, on the rack. 
with the uh, bolt hole here and then you can start the bolt and torque it down to 18 foot pounds now you can see that the uh, steering wheel is straight and the wheels are straight so we're in the ballpark if your car had a messages on the uh, dash or had codes you may have to go in there and clear out the codes with a scan tool you're not going to be able to do this with a generic scan tool you need to go in on the manufacturer side now i got the car started and i'm spinning the uh, wheel back and forth and as you can hear it's nice and quiet no more noise uh, no more popping noise or squealing noises. So I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way if you need to pick any of those up, you can find those links there. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive and I'd like to thank you guys for watching, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.